everyone, Alicia Miguel here with Math Labs. I have something for you today. Listen up. Oh, hey! Do you got the power? I've got the power. The power of 10, my friend. That's what we're looking at today. Powers of 10. I've got the power. Here's the power of 10. 10 to the first. Yep, 10 to the first power. It's just 10. 10 to the second. It means 10 times 10. It's powerful. That's a huge number, right? In comparison to 10, it's 100. What about 10 to the third power? 10 times 10 times 10. Do you know what that is? 10 times 10 is 100. Times 10 is 1,000. That's 1,000. It's very powerful, right? This is called a base. This is an exponent. You're going to learn more about that. But today we're going to focus on powers of 10. These are powers of 10. 10, 100, 1,000. And you know what? What would 10 to the fourth power be following this pattern? Let's just write that down. What would that be? Yeah, 10, 100, 1,000. It's 10,000. Very good. It's, it's 10 times 10 times 10 times another power of 10. So we have 10 to the fourth. All right. Um, today's lab is 4.7, and this is Common Core State Standard 5.nbt.2, which is basically utilizing shortcuts in and understanding what happens when you multiply by a power of 10, and also divide. Um, and this is mathematical practices two, three, five, and seven. Really, 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 really focusing on seven. Uh, and, and Math Labs does this quite frequently, but it's seven because that is using repeated reasoning. So when kids um, put their answers in a table, right? So students, I, you know, this is for two audiences, so I'm talking to teachers and students. When you put your answers in a table and analyze them and look for a shortcut, you're using repeated reasoning, and we've been doing a lot of that, and that's really like what Math Labs is all about. All right, so let's, I'm gonna tap into your prior knowledge. First, let me read the objective. Um, I can use powers of 10 to simplify quantities. Okay, so um, when we use powers of 10, we're gonna basically multiply and divide with them, all right? Let's tap into something that you already know. Everyone should know what five times 10 is, based on, you know, third grade, fourth grade. And we all know that that's 50. And if I said what's 5 times 100, you might recall the shortcut 500. And similarly, 5 times 1,000, 5,000. <laughs> Ooh, I got a little excited there. Um, and so you recall, like, oh, I think, you know, many of you saw this pattern early on. When you have a zero, you can add it to the end and multiply the numbers, right? Um, well, we're going to extend that today by looking at problems involving decimals and what happens with a decimal and also when we divide, okay? But this is kind of the foundation, and hopefully you remember that because this is going to help you make the connection to today's lesson. All right, so the first part that you're working on in the lab is that exact problem, you know, 5 times 10, 5 times 100, kind of tapping into that prior knowledge. But then you're going to look at a problem like this. 2.4 times 10. So essentially one with a decimal here. And I have you go through this repeated addition because remember 2.4 times 10 means 2.4 10 times, right? So that's like, you know, 2.4. And only, I, we only do this for a few. So I know this is a lot. So 2.4, 2.4. So you have to add that 10 times. 2.4 10 times. I kind of lost track of where I'm at. I don't know where I'm at. Let's see. I'm going to count. Maybe now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so one more. So 2.4, 10 times. So then we could add and line up our decimals. 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. You know, this 4 10 times. And that's 40. Oh, we end up with a 0. Okay, this is all based on our number system of 10s and, and what happens here. So I carry that 4 and uh, watch what happens in the 1s column. So I added all of my 10s, if you recall. Um, we have to line up decimals for adding and subtracting. You discovered that. And so now we're going to, with, with relationship to money, we're going to add the ones here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, plus that 4 makes 24. So we end up with our answer of 24. All right. So you might be looking at this and, and see something already. So you're going to do this, um, you know, just like three or four times. And then we're going to apply um, division and also multiplying not only by 10, but 100, then you're gonna put your answers in a table, and from the table, you are going to generate the shortcuts. 
um, for multiplying by a power of 10, um, like 10, 100, or 1,000. And we're not going to write it like 10 to the second or third. I was just showing you that that's up, up to the power, because these are powers of 10. But you're just going to write it like, you know, 3.8 times 10 equals. And you'll notice that that's 38. And then you're going to find the pattern. So um, this slide is all about um, analyzing your answers and looking for a shortcut so that we can easily get to our um, product when we multiply or our quotient when we divide. All right, so right now you are going to analyze, right, and apply. So I launched the lab for, for you and for the teachers that will be using this. Now you're going to analyze and apply, and then we'll come back in about 15 to 20 minutes. And um, after you brief with your partner and answer the summarizing questions, we'll debrief as a class and, and really uh, just share what we saw, what patterns we noticed, what we discovered, the shortcut, etc., and then talk about um, the reasoning behind some of this in, in terms of what's happening with our 10 because, um, because we have 10 fingers and what happens with that, why 10 is so powerful. I've got the power. Okay, I can't sing, but I can do math. I'm a mathematician, you're a mathematician, let's have some fun.